but go ahead. Let's talk about the mosquitoes, you guys. So okay. Tina Leah from Maui is rocking it on Maui. Um, Kauai just barely, we were able to, to put in a, a court uh, uh, to stop um, their decision so far for Kauai. Uh, That's so be temporary. talk to us about, yeah, That's gonna be, correct. Yeah, you know that. So, so here's what I recommend. So they're, w give me the scenario. So they got these mosquitoes that are destroying possibly the bird population, right? The ecosystem. Yes, in that they stuff. have. Okay. What they're claiming is they say that they these birds they want to uh, release these injected Wolbachia and Wolbachia bacteria injected mosquitoes, and the male mosquitoes will not be compatible with the female mosquitoes. However, they're going to be releasing accidentally releasing females mosquitoes with the male injected mosquitoes, it's and deliberate. those are very much compatible. And yeah. they claim that this is so that they'll save the native birds. But here's the kicker on it all because they save na na the native birds from avian malaria that they get from the mosquitoes. But the, the biggest thing that shows that that is not the reason for this experiment is they are not even going to, they don't have any protocol to, to show how this is actually affecting the birds. Is it actually helping? They have no protocol whatsoever for what they're claiming is the whole reason for the mosquitoes. Okay. So it's obviously something else. Okay, so it, it comes down to land rights. So right now your your land rights are abandoned. Nobody's paying attention. And you just what you just described is argumentative. It has to be. Mm -hmm. Like the petition yes. for injunctive relief pre presents an argument to the court and the counter is what they're saying. And so now it's not a settled matter. Everybody's arguing. And what's going to happen? They're going to let mm -hmm. them do it anyways. So Yes, correct. What, what you have to do is is take your your what the conclusion is. The conclusion is don't let them do it. Right? Don't let them allow this insect to be have access to the land. What I would mm -hmm. suggest that you do is write up an easement specifying how you're going to conserve and protect the land as it's stated in your petition for injunctive relief. This is what you're going to do anyways. So if I own some land in Hawaii or Kauai and I want to and I want to be that one person, you're you're going to have to do this many times, thousands of times. You write up an easement agreement and you record it as the title holder. And now what you have is trespass when the mosquito comes onto the property. You have a claim that's based on a settled matter and you don't have to argue and you don't need expert witnesses anymore. You come in there for a simple trespass. Wow, that's, that that's a very different way. <laughs> that's a very different argue. way than what we're now, doing. Now all this arguing about if it's good or bad, who cares? It doesn't matter. I could be totally insane out of my mind, but guess what? I have easement rights and you just trespassed. And I would just take that easement. Hey, Tina, and I, would, Leah, I hope you're watching this. I would record it on every, go to everybody who wants to file a petition and sign the petition. Forget that. Yeah. Sign an easement and record it on your property and then sue them for trespass because the matter's already settled. It doesn't matter if I'm right so... or wrong. Yeah. yeah. So we're looking for people who own property then in Maui and Kauai where the mosquitoes are going to be released. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. And we could do this for so okay. many other things, like all the fires in California and all this stuff. It's a settled matter. Easements. All right. No that's that is amazing. It's like right in our face. And that's actually way more simpler than claim the going to court right. and arguing. Yeah, they're just gonna yeah. they're gonna let you do it, so it looks like it's legitimate. It's a show. Like yeah, you were saying that's the what other they day. do. It really is. So let's let's that's, turn that's the TV exactly off. What they're doing. Let's the parents come home and catch the kids at the keg party and say, "Okay, this party's over. Record the easement. <laughs> now you got an action. You got something that's actionable. Mm -hmm. And there's no arguing about that. That's right. It's just about did you that's trespass fun. or not? Yes, you did. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it. I love that. So let's let's go. Let's talk about property rights because people I know they've a lot of people have been asking me about, hey, when Michelle, what about property taxes? And I was just watching one of your videos. And again, his his website is Ace of Coins and it's a uh, link is in the description. But you were talking about property and taxes in the video that's on your home okay. page. So so lately I started looking at this stuff and I'm thinking, OK, who has what lien rights on real estate generally? And I'm talking about residential homes. I live in the suburb. That's why I look at that. And so the HOAs have lien rights. The HOA covenant is a lien. Now there's that that's separate from what I'm going to talk about on easements regarding property taxes. So the HOA lien survives every foreclosure. 
even on its own okay. claim. So for example, if you, if you owe the HOA some fines or something and it wants to foreclose in your house, it can, it can dispossess you of the house. It can take the title and this sort of thing and then it can sell it and whatever. It can become the title holder temporarily. The HOA has a lot of power, but what's really interesting about this is the HOA has the least priority lien. It's behind the mortgage, the state property taxes. It's behind the city codes. It's under your mortgage, second mortgage. It's the last lien holder. It has the lowest priority, but guess what happens? Yeah. It, it never goes away. It always gets the last word. So if, if, I, if I control an HOA, which I've got some clients right now, we're defeating the IRS, these guys, it doesn't matter if they foreclose on the property because the HOA will simply take it back. So you have to control the That's HOA. So okay. there's a little bit there's a little bit wow. more involved with using an HOA in this manner. But here's why I brought it up. So when they started the fake pandemic, like in in 2020, I said, "Look, guys, you are you're calling me on the phone. You're complaining about your kids are going to the school and they're doing this insane stuff, and you're still sending your children to school. So they're laughing at you. They're doing and you're paying for no. it. Yeah. So thank why you? you. But here's what they say. They go, "Well, I don't have a choice. I think, look, you always have a choice. So you always have stop." A choice paying for it, stop paying your property taxes and send a letter to the property appraiser's office and your state attorney general's office and tell them, I'm not funding this anymore. And so the, I know what they say. Everybody says, but John, they're going to take my house because I won't pay the property tax. And I say, yeah, they'll take the title, but be the last lien holder, be the easement right holder. So take some of the money, let's say 10% of what you would pay in the property tax and set that aside for you know, road maintenance and things of that nature, emergency services, and put that into a trust fund and add that to the budget for your sheriff's office. You can do that yourself. You have to work with your neighbors on this stuff. So take your whole neighborhood that's under the HOA and do this for each neighborhood. Allocate money for the services you want and don't pay for the services you don't want because you're not getting those or hurting your family. All right, so so let's say they foreclose on your property. Remember, if you control the HOA, somebody the state's gonna foreclose on your property, take the title, and then once once all that's settled, you simply have the HOA do an impact fee and foreclose on the property and take it back and then give it whatever and take you it back it. and take it back. Wow. Take it back from the state or whatever investor bought it. Sorry, investor, but you saw that coming. You should have known better, but you can use the HOA for that purpose. And it does take cooperation with your neighbors, uh, unless you're the only HOA. And it takes I mean, inter yeah. inter encourage, encourage. It takes a little bit of effort. Sure. Okay. Now, an easier way to do it is with an easement. Now, the easement. You are taking rights you have as a title holder and you're conveying them over to the possession of the property. And you're you're establishing these rights in a written instrument called an easement. It does not have to be recorded, although I recommend it be recorded. Because once it's recorded, it's public record. It survives a foreclosure because it's not part of the title. It's immune from foreclosure. Wow. So if you have this is a let, this is let's say I have an acre. A friend of, of mine's land. doing oh, go ahead. Let's say I have an acre uh, house, okay, and I, I don't like the property tax scheme. Yeah, I'm, I'm like fed up with it. Okay, look, my property tax is like in New Hampshire, doubled. All right, I'm done with that. <clears throat> I'm not going to pay anymore. So a couple of years go by, and the state's going to foreclose on my property. So they do. Sell my, they sell my title. Some person buys it, or the state takes it over. I'm still there. Why? Because I have the legal right to be there under the easement rights. So there's a thing called the dominant estate, which is your title holder. You are the title holder if you're on the title or your company's on the title. Let's say you're a trust, right? You're using a trust or something. It doesn't matter. That's the dominant estate. The dominant estate conveys most of its rights. You can't do all of it. It can't be identical. You convey most of the rights to the easement holder, which is known as the servient estate. And I always use a corporation for this. You can use a trust, but I like using a limited liability company. <clears throat> so once I convey the rights, okay, and let's say the title's taken, you would think I got to leave. <laughs> Because, you know, I'm trespassing. No, because now under the servient estate, I take, I, I use a lease agreement and I'm leasing the property back from the servient estate, which had the same or similar rights as I did as the title holder. So now I have a, it's a civil matter. It's not trespass. And I can retain the use of the property. And yeah, I won't have the title for a while, but what's going to happen is I believe the title holder is going to just not be able to put good money after bad. And at some point you'll be able to recover the title as an abandoned property, like a quiet title action without controversy. Wow. But in the meantime, it doesn't matter because you're not on the hook for property taxes. You never would be. And you're the easement holder and it doesn't really matter. Wow. So this, is this what you've done with your house and with, and this is how you help other clients? I'm doing this with, uh, I have 91 acres up in uh, Cedar Key and I'm doing that with that land. So it's two parcels and I'm doing it there. 
so I, you know, I'm developing that land. I'm not paying property tax on that. I'm not doing anything. Now, sometimes I'll get a permit because I got to build it up and do some things. I got to remove some trees and build some things. So for some safety reasons, I might get a permit, but sometimes I won't get a permit or if they make it too difficult for me, I won't bother. I don't need that. So I have That's the other thing. There's always making yeah. yeah these permits and everything like that. I'm like, why do people have to get a permit on the, their own their supposed own land? If they own the land, why abandoned. is it that we have to get permission? It's abandoned. You abandoned it. You're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're criticizing it. You got to stop abandoning the property rights. Claim your property rights and use it properly. 